I believe there are more than 24, 25 different Sicilian variations if you play the second move, knight f3. Why would you bother yourself, especially if you're a beginner, especially if you play on medium level, if you're a club player, if you're an amateur? Uh, basically, if you're not professional, why would you go that deep into all those openings? And that's why I'm here. Uh, to show you Grand Prix Attack for White. Uh, Grand Prix Attack for White uh, has been used as one of the major like anti uh, or side Sicilian openings against uh, Sicilian and uh, altogether with the Alep in defense and close Sicilian uh, that is definitely uh, the most, uh, let's just say, reliable variation for White. How does it appear on the board? After e4, c5, knight c3. Uh, why do you play knight c3? Please, um, going and surfing over the web and YouTube, I found that many guys said play f4. Don't go for that. That's a McDonald attack. And in McDonald, McDonald attack is not good uh, order of moves to go into this variation. Because if you play f4, it's considered to be, according to the latest analysis, bad against d5. Just because of this, we play knight c3 here to stop d5. So when they play knight c6, uh, we're going to divide all these videos onto the following ones. So we're going to have knight c3, knight c6. By the way, this is Grand Prix attack f4. And we're going to divide this into the main variation with g6, knight f3, bishop g7. And here you have like a couple of possibilities. Uh, there are like two main uh, variations. Uh, one goes with bishop c4, another one goes with bishop e5. We're going to focus on bishop e5, which in my opinion is way more serious option by white. Nowadays more popular and definitely uh, scores better results for white than bishop c4 that is a little bit overpassed and apart from that uh, by the way this like main video i'm going to divide into two type of videos so in um, today's video i'm going to teach you how to play against side suspicious variations by black so uh, basically uh, what does it mean uh, everything apart from the main line 94 this is going to be the subject of the next video. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to play against knight a5, um, how to play against queen c7, how to play against a6, uh, very popular amongst passers, how, how to play against d6, another very popular move, and finally, how to play against d6, which in my opinion is the most serious of all these sidelines. Let's get started. After e4, c5, just like I previously told you, go always with knight c3 first. So when they play knight c6, because knight c3 stops d5, knight c6, you play f4. We can already uh, call this opening Grand Prix attack, uh, but in order to teach you why do we actually, and to explain you better, why do we uh, call this variation Grand Prix attack, I'll need a little bit more time and to give you like a few more basic opening moves. So after g6, by the way, which is the main line, knight f3, bishop g7, here we uh, go with the bishop b5. And just like I told you, you probably can surf through the web and find the videos with the bishop c4, but I'm not a fan of that move anymore. Bishop b5 makes much more sense and scores way better for white. But let's stop for a moment and to consider why uh, one should study and play Grand Prix attack. Well, statistics, statistics give the answer. In fact, this opening is one of the most successful weapons against Sicilian. If you don't want to spend like long time memorizing all those lines, uh, learning all those Knight of Dragon, Taiman of Ken, Sveshnikov, uh, Rouser and many other openings, uh, this is the right choice for you. This opening is very dangerous for black and from my own, even player's experience, I might say that 
Uh, every side Sicilian opening is tricky, but in my opinion, this one is the trickiest one. By the way, uh, if you just wonder whose games you should analyze here, and uh, just like we had for the Portuguese variation, uh, Smerdan and another guy from uh, Portugal, uh, right now forgot his name. Uh, in this opening, uh, the main exponents uh, of this opening are Gawain Jones, definitely the guy uh, who used this opening even in a high level and uh, scored like such a nice and beautiful wins by White, uh, has a great results with Wiz. Uh, then uh, there is Jean-Marc de Grave, Yuldachev, Gelashvili, Minasyan, and just like I previously told you, these are the leaders and the, let's just say, main gurus of this opening. So it's a good idea to look at their games if you want to understand the main ideas and plans of the Grand Prix attack. Just like I told you in uh, tonight's video, I'm going to teach you how to play against the sidelines. And knight d4 is the main move, in my opinion. It's the only good, reliable continuation by black. And if you ever face this opening with black pieces, please don't let your opponent take on c6. Uh, right now, I'm just about to explain you the point of bishop e5. When we play bishop e5, we certainly, just like in Trompovsky, when you play bishop g5, you come here to take on c6. Taking on c6 would create a, a potentially weak pawn structure in a black's game. And what's your plan? So when you take on uh, c6, you just want to go with the typical uh, Grand Prix attack. By the way, from now on, I'm going to use the shortcut of Grand Prix attack, and I'll call this opening GPA. So after bishop b5, uh, there are like so many sidelines. We're just going to cover uh, a6, c6, and d6, I believe, as a part of uh, this variation just a little bit later. But I'd like to start with knight a5, queen c7, as a moves where they simply don't allow you to uh, take on c6. Knight a5, quite an interesting line. Usually played by guys who don't want to study all those uh, long theoretical variations and to go deep into theory, they just want to avoid. Uh, basically, they avoid here bishop takes c6, but from another point of view, they just put this knight on the edge of the board. There are like two main principles of facing this one. I'll try to always give you alternatives. Because if I just give you one a way of playing and trading this opening or one variation, it's fine, it's nice, but I'm kind of restricting you, uh, you know, like, and giving you what I, for example, like the most. No, I'll try to give you alternatives and um, you will... Uh, decide what you uh, prefer and what you want to play in the future. After knight a5, uh, computers give d4 as the main line. So after d4, they have to take, knight takes, a6, of course, to kick this bishop away so they can play d6 afterwards. Bishop e3, knight f6, castles with a little bit better position for white. What is this? Uh, this is not a dragon opening because they have a6 and that weird knight on a5. Uh, this is not neither of opening because they already committed themselves with a bishop on g7. So this is nothing. Uh, but generally, uh, this is probably a slightly better game for white. So after castles, you should be going with e5. If they go queen c7, e5 once again with the pawn sack, which looks very tempting for white. And if knight c6, you just take it once again, that move e5. Let's approach with d4. Although, in the real spirit of this opening, I suggest to go with short castle. So when they go a6, bishop e2, uh, just when you're about to go maybe with d4, but we actually want to go with d3, and I'm going to explain you what the GPA is. 
they just go with knight c6 to stop d4 ideas by white. But that wasn't our intention anyways. And here, a very important move comes. Queen e1. But before that, what happens if they just try to expand on the queen side playing b5? You go d3. They go b4. You go knight e5. They go e6. And this knight hides on e3. This is a very common idea of transferring your knight from one side of the board to another in order to support the pawn storm on the king's side and attack, which is basically the main idea of this aggressive opening. After 97 f5, never hesitate to sack this pawn on f5 in order to create an attack on the king's side, open up dark square bishop, and uh, eventually after queen e1, queen h4 idea, uh, create a very, very serious and uh, dangerous attack there. So after g takes, e takes bishop e7, knight g5. I like this position very much. Bishop h5 is threatened, e takes, followed by knight f7. White really looks good. Those who play knight e6 to stop d4 and to be able to jump immediately with this knight on d4, you go with queen e1. It's very important to do this queen e1 move because if they go with d6, you go d3. They go knight e4, and uh, right now, when they think that you have to take in order to remove this knight, you just go with the bishop d1. I just want to uh, teach you and to force you to pay attention to this idea. We had this in some Dutch openings, when you play bishop e7 and bishop d8, and when the knight comes on d5, covering that pawn on c7. This is the same idea, just reversed colors. And bishop d1 looks good, because bishop d1 stops any knight c2, it controls that knight on f3, and it still gives you possibility to go with f5, opening your dark square bishop afterwards, and going with the queen, uh, probably most natural, attacking square h4. So after knight f6 by black, uh, I analyze knight d4, knight e2, and h3. What's so special about h3? I want to do queen f4, sorry, queen f2, so they, they won't have knight g4 possibility, and I would be able to go after this d4 pawn afterwards. Quite an interesting line, uh, but I really have to say that knight e5 shouldn't cause white, uh, not a serious problem, but actually were in most of these lines easily better. Speaking of queen c7, behind this idea, uh, there is just an idea. There are just a plan by black to capture by queen on c6 and not to ruin the pawn structure. Uh, I analyzed this like many, many uh, times. And in my opinion, of course, that castle would be probably the most logical move. But I like taking on c6. Taking on c6 uh, definitely uh, gives us a very simple game afterwards. After queen c6, you play d3. Just like you see in all these type of GPA or Grand Prix attack ideas, you never go with d4. Actually, in that line with knight a5, I gave you that approach, but you shouldn't do that. So after d3, d6, castles, now we have position that can divide into many variations. They can put the knight on f6, and let me just teach you and let me just show you one of the main ideas. As long as they haven't castled, so they still haven't castled, uh, you just have to make a move that is going to be useful, but nothing too defining, and you're just not just going to phone to your opponent then, hey man, I'm going to play queen e1, queen h4, f5, and to mate you on the king's side. So probably you should be playing king h1, because he anyways spent like so much time uh, going with that queen on c7, recapturing on c6, and so on. And now when he goes castle, now you say, okay, man, I want your blood, f5. So you open up this bishop, and now your queen goes on e1 and h4. Don't ever bother if they take on f5. You actually play like nothing's happening. So you just want to go queen h4. If they capture, you would recapture, your queen comes here, you want to play knight h6, and you go knight g5. Actually, there is one good point uh, why you actually allow them to take on f5. Because 
they weaken the king, open up the G file, and basically open up the F file. So your rook on F1 uh, should be able to hit that knight on F6 afterwards and to go for the attack. Just because of this, that's just one option. So knight goes on f6. Another option is if they, if they play e6 and knight goes on e7. So you go queen e1, knight e7. And once again, I don't want to phone you that I want to meet you on the king's side and go with my attack there. So I play useful bishop d2. You can play bishop d2 followed by a3 and b4. Uh, also, you, you're just showing like a clear sign and given a player actually uh, idea to your opponent, hey man, don't make a long castle, I'm gonna kick your ass there with a3, b4 and potential a queen side attack. So once they go with castle, it's time for queen h4 and it's time for f5. After queen d7, queen d7 is very interesting pattern of um, opposing the attack on the king side. But you usually uh, prevent this idea with h3. h3 is nice because any e5 it should stop with f5 but if they don't do anything if they just keep waiting I'm gonna be playing f5 and at some point when you play e takes f5 and f takes e4 you won't be able to play and to come with your queen on g4. So after h3 f5 uh, g4. I like this uh, move. I also like rook a to e1, but I kind of like this one because I want to play e takes f5, knight g5, rook a to e1 with a massive attack. Uh, I played a blitz game like this, if f takes e4, knight e4, bishop g7, rook a to e1, knight e5, c3, locking this bishop on b2, threatening like so many other things, including knight e g5, f5, and so on, what is just much better. And finally, in position where after queen c7, bishop c6, queen c6, d3, d6, castles, they go with a move like bishop g4. Don't panic. You play queen e1, they take you take by rook, they go knight f6, and just wait them to go with short castle. We go with queen h4. Uh, they shouldn't be able to play long castle, because if they play long castle, I have e5, uh, but I also have plan with... Uh, bishop d2, a3, rook b1, and b4 doing an attack. But here they can play because of e5. And after they do castle, uh, this is a question for all typical uh, Grand Prix attackers. So what should you play here? Of course, f5. Uh, you just open up this bishop. You want to go on h6. Your rook should be sliding along the third rank on h3 into attack. And that's how you play. You can also play like this. And if they play before, to include your knight with rook a to f1 and play knight to f4. Um, what I like about Grand Prix attack, sometimes your dark square bishop goes on h6. Sometimes it goes on g5. Uh, this rook may go on g3 and h3. Obviously here it's going to go on h3. Uh, but what I'm actually trying to say it's an uh, opening full of possibilities. Uh, apart from queen c7, let's now uh, pay uh, like uh, very much attention on these bad moves. Uh, many, many games uh, of all my students who I taught to play Grand Prix Attack with the white pieces, I've seen that their opponents went for a6. You know, probably if there is a stupid move, if there is a useless move for black, I think it, it should be a6 because I came on b5 to take on c6 and now you play a6 yourself. So we take. There are always two type of uh, options for black. To take by d pawn, in which case we go d3, castle, f5, queen e1, queen h4, typical gpa, or b takes. In which case we go with d3 and now depending on circumstances and black ideas we actually decide what are we going to do so let's imagine they go with d6 uh, going for this type of position we're actually going to analyze when we play bishop b5 and instead of a6 they go with d6 this is even worse version because they have wasted one more tempi with a6 that's very stupid, and here we just go with castles, knight f6, do queen e1, and when they go castle, go with a queen h4. I'd like to stop here and to uh, 
uh, ask you, uh, do you uh, by actually, uh, did you by now realize how should you organize and uh, carry on with a Grand Prix attack? Of course, you should play f5, bishop h6, and knight g5. That's the most typical and essential idea for the Grand Prix attack. They can play many moves like rook b8, so uh, showing that you won't be able to play f5 and bishop h6 just like that. You can play rook b1. They go knight d7 to threaten bishop c3 to win the piece. You play bishop d2. And no one and nobody can stop us from playing f5, bishop h6, knight g5. Instead of this, they can also go with knight h6. I like this idea. It looks better to me because they want to play f5. Um, whenever you see knight on h6 in these sidelines of Grand Prix, uh, don't bother too much to go with the queen a1 and queen h4. Simply that idea, even, even if you, in most of these positions, even if you decide to go, there are like certain ways of creating those games and uh, you can't play like queen e1, queen h4, knight g5 because that idea doesn't seem to be working anymore. I'm going to show you a game of Grandmaster who had white pieces in, in this position and who went for castles, d6, queen e1, f5. Uh, looks like... Uh, it's pointless now to go with the queen h4 because queen on h4 uh, is not going to support any knight g5 idea. Uh, queen on h4 is usually good when it goes along with f5. So when you see the knight on h6, forget about queen h4 idea. You would ask me, so why queen one idea? Because uh, it should give you, for example, this guy played h3, castles, and played bishop e3. And... He's been waiting for black to come up with something. C4, D5, E5. Uh, luckily for us, they can't play any of these moves. Rook B8 and B3. Now you do understand the point of Queen on E1. Because he defends this knight on C3. And supports the idea of E5 at some point. In order to close this bishop on G7. Uh, also, Queen on E1 supports this knight on C3. And gives some ideas afterwards. Rook to d1, avoiding this rook from the pin. So after queen c7, knight a4. A very important move as a part of our plan. We just want to go with c4, which basically happened in this game, captured an f5, and broke in the center with d4. After all these exchanges, uh, let's take a look at this position, and I believe that you uh, obviously realized uh, that black is behind in development, that white just has like rook to d3 and rook g3 idea, that this queen on e1 does a good job on the e file. So after c5, rook d3, bishop e7, knight c3, rook f2, rook e3, and tripling this rooks. After queen h4, rook g8, knight d5, and grandmaster Chernyshev uh, won his game. This was a very nice game and uh, very typical for the GPA, uh, but let's be honest, if there is a stupid move by black here, it's a6. Uh, it's especially uh, good, and it especially turned out for players, uh, I don't know, ranged from 1400 to 1900. I've seen so many games by my students where they played bishop e5, and their opponents just went for a6. It's terrible because you know what? I anyways came there to take on c6. So thank you for wasting your time. Speaking of e6, e6 is a bad move. Uh, it's actually, once again, all together with uh, a6, one of the worst moves of all these sidelines. Why? Simply, black is hoping for knight g7 to get these flexible knights. But that's not going to happen because we're just going to uh, prevent that by black knight g7 and take on c6 immediately. There are two plans here by black. They can once again take by b pawn and they can take by d pawn. Uh, a very classic idea by white, if they take by d pawn, let's stop here uh, for a moment, take a look at this one, find a positionally killing move 
uh, by white. And for example, if you stop the video and look for a real positional move that kills black's king, it's e5. It closes this bishop on g7. It gives you knight e4 with the attack on c5, but more importantly with uh, jump on d6. Uh, finally, after knight e7, knight e4, we want to jump there. We want to play knight e6, knight g5. You can't even imagine uh, how big number of games I won thanks to this one. And when they play castles, good thing, since I haven't committed myself with short castle, I'm going to try to take advantage of h4. I remember playing in a championship of my city. It was tournament game. And one 2150 guy played against me at this point h5. I played knight f to g5, played g4, and I crushed him in like six or seven moves from now. You just play g4, queen g4, h5, and mate is definitely on horizon. Uh, after h4, knight f5, h5, queen d5, d3, c4, knight c3, queen a5, g4, d takes c4, white was winning. What a crushing game. This is another game uh, of mine played in, I don't know, it, I believe it was a uh, championship of my city, but this time in Blitz. And here, after h6, queen d6, black was almost hopeless. And just like you see, and all things considered, this d takes c6 move is just terrible. Uh, a little bit better and more uh, resisting idea by black is b takes c6. It doesn't change much our reaction, but I'll show you what's like so different about that. We play e5. We once again uh, take advantage of dark squares and we would like to go with knight e4. And after e5, they can now play d5 or d6. That's the difficulty of these positions. If they go with d6, you just go with knight e4. And when they take on d5, you take by f1, you will play d3, you'll play bishop g5, you may jump with this knights on g5. You will go with short castle, c5 is threatened, white just looks so much better. And another thing in this variation is, if they play instead of d6, if they play d5. It's, it looks more dangerous, uh, because it, and it looks more logical by black, because it stops knight e4. But don't worry, actually it's one of the easiest type of games uh, to play against in this Grand Prix attack uh, sessions. So what's the point? Uh, all these type of structures, when they have c6, mm, c5, d5, and e6 pawns, all these type of structures, you'll play in a very specific fashion. It is going to be, that's why I sometimes say, so what do you think about the Grand Prix? I say, is it aggressive? I say, yes. Is it easy for playing and for learning? I say, yes. Uh, do you consider it like one of the most aggressive openings? I said, well, not, not like that. Because in so, so, you know, in such a big number of these variations, you just have to be very positional. I know it sounds crazy, but for example, this is the one. So how should you play against this position? You have to play d3 and you have to go with a typical plan from Nimzo Indian. Just like in Nimzo Indian, you have c4 and c3 uh, double pawns. You have here the same pawn structure from black's point of view with c pawns on c6 and on c5. So how should you play there? Why do you play d3? Uh, d3 move is uh, aimed here uh, to stop c4, to open up uh, queen going on f2. But basically, if I just try to explain you like this, you will have difficulties. Uh, if I just try to give you like the simplest idea how to attack this pawn on c5, go with b3, bishop a3, knight a4, and put all your efforts against this pawn. Queen sometimes may go on e1 and on f2 in order to go against c5 pawn as well. In the meantime, if you have time to play knight a4 and uh, if the pawn was on b3 to play c4, that would be ideal for white because you would, um, of course, 
fix the pawn on c5, and afterwards uh, you would be able to uh, pick it up. In this game, black played bishop a6, trying to somehow uh, use uh, this c5 pawn and trying to undouble them. After castles d3, I very much like this move. Full control of the dark squares, not even necessary to play b3 and bishop a3. So after knight e7, knight e4, knight should be jumping on c5. Knight f5 going against the bishop, bishop f2, uh, stops g4, knight c5, and queen to d2 followed by queen a5. A grandmaster Hick, Jörg Hickel from Germany uh, played this game in a great style and uh, he positionally completely killed his opponent. I'm briefly going to show you what happened there. After c takes, played queen a5 threatening this bishop. Bishop b7 played c takes and put the rook on the open file. With all these existing uh, pieces by white, except this may be a rook on f1, and only good piece in black's game, I'm talking about knight on f5, uh, this was like positionally completely lost game for black. Quinn misplaced. Both of these rooks inactive. A bishop on b7, terrible. Bishop on g7 as well. Only good piece is knight on f5, and we can always swap it off with some, for example, knight d4, or we may go with h3 and g4 to kick it away. So after rook d8, d4, uh, bishop h6, g3, h3, and th that's exactly what happened in this game when Hickel broke on the king side with g4, this position simply collapsed. Knight h2 was a nice move, bishop h4, f5, f6, and bishop to e1, allowing himself to go with queen e1, queen h8, and queen g7, checkmate. Move like e6 should be considered uh, as a very bad move. Uh, you just have to know that when you take on c6, please, don't forget to take on c6. That's the main uh, reason why we actually have to talk about the e6 as a bad move. If you allow knight g on e7, and you forgot to take, you already spoiled everything in this opening and you're not going to have an easy time. So after e6, bishop takes e6, uh, d takes e6, you play e5, please don't forget about that, you want to go with knight e4 next. If they go b, the, sorry, b takes e6, you once again go e5 with the idea of knight e4. Two simple uh, approaches. If they go with the 6, you force them with knight e4 to commit themselves to take on e5, in which case you would take, you attack pawn c5, you want to play d3, bishop c5, bishop g5, you want to go short castle with knight g5, an amazing position. If they go with, uh, for example, uh, this b takes e6, e5, d5, all you have to do is to apply well-known Nimzovich. Uh, actually attack against the Nimzo pawn structure c4, c3 uh, in those Nimzo type of positions where black goes with bishop e6 and knight a5. Here, you just do the same reversed colors, bishop a3 and knight a4. And finally, of all these variations, probably the most serious one is if they play d6. I'm saying the most serious one because, for example, uh, I've even noticed that Knight did choose this system against the watch. It was maybe a rapid or blitz game, but he played that. Those are great players and uh, great theoreticians, and they certainly know what they do. You should never, absolutely never wait. Always take whenever you have chance to create these double pawns. And after a castle. Here, black has like a wide range of possibilities. A student of mine showed me a game uh, where he played against some 20 to 50 guy where his opponent played e6. It's a little bit different situation. If the pawn was on e5, you would have gone with knight e4. If the pawn was on e5 and he goes d5, you go with a typical plan b3, bishop a3, knight a4 against the c5 pawn. But now when you play e5 and they go d5, Da -da -da -da. We just go into the same type of position. d3, followed by knight a4, b3, bishop a3, going against the c5 pawn. So we're actually forcing absolutely the same type of game. Uh, that's about e6 plans. 
If they play knight h6, I had a chance to play against this uh, variation. I very much like game of a uh, guy whose games I like to analyze so much. His name is Yuldachev. So d3, castles, queen e1, rook b8. By the way, I just want to show you uh, old Tivyakov's plan. If anyone ever is with the knight on h6, plays f5 against you. Take advantage of queen on e1. By the way, here you were threatening f5, followed by queen h4, but they actually tried to stop that by f5 themselves. Then you always go with e5. Then you always go with b3 to kind of, you know, like uh, shut off this rook on the, on the b file and absolutely make it useless. And after queen c7, knight a4, bishop b2, and this is what we want. We want queen h4 and rook a to e1. Bishop on b2 is eventually going to be swapped off with the bishop on g7. Knight on f3 could go with, you know, actually this rook a to e1 is going to threaten e takes d6, rook takes e6, and knight g5 at some point. So it's not position without any danger, without any, like, poison here. And that's what I like about these type of games. In Yoldachev's game, after knight h6, d3, castles, uh, queen e1, rook b8, he played f5, this guy played e6, and stopped the video and tried to find the move for a while. Uh, I gave you time, and I hope you found it. It's f6. What a great move. Because if you play queen f6, say goodbye to your lady. If you play bishop f6, say goodbye to your knight. If you don't do anything, say goodbye to either bishop on g7 or knight on h6. What a nice and easy game, uh, just thanks to the slight tactics. If they go knight f6, you go d3, you go castles, and you go queen e1. When a couple of my students asked me, so Maya, what's the main idea of the Grand Prix attack? How would you say that? What would you say that in like a couple of words? I always tell them this. Uh, no matter what I do, no matter how they play, your plan always remain the same. So let's say they go, for example, bishop d7, and you just want to see what should be our plan. Queen always go on h4. After queen goes on h4, you want to play f5. After that, you want to play bishop h6. After that, you want to play knight g5. After that, you want to take on g6. And after this, I should actually give you this position because you want to play Grand Prix attack with the white pieces. You got to be great at tactics. I know that whoever wants to play this opening has to be creative, uh, has to uh, be, you know, like with, not with good, with pretty, uh, pretty, uh, good and the quality tactical skills and for example take a look at this one stop the video and try to find tactics for white it's rook f6 what's so strong if you take by pawn then you go bishop g7 and queen comes to either h7 or h8 with mate if they take by bishop once again stop the video and find the move for white it's bishop g7 it's one of the most beautiful tactical tricks uh, typical for a Grand Prix attack. I just want to remind you, I'm not lying to you if I tell you that I won more than probably 50 or hundreds of games like this. So it's a very common idea and people uh, keep falling for this one. After Queen E1, uh, for example, uh, players like to do E6. Those who do E6, you never have any reason to hesitate. E5. They take, you take. Jump with the knight on E4. Play afterwards bishop F4, queen G3 or queen H4. And start playing on the dark squares. These are terrible squares. And your bishop and knight can go there all together with the knight here. Then apart from that variation, uh, there is a line with knight E8. Speaking of knight E8, I already showed you Tivyakov's plan. So play king h1, you can play f5, and you can go with the attack. Attack is typical. 
uh, queen h4, bishop h6, knight g5. But I also like king h1 because we make this uh, useful prophylactic move. And I'm just, I just want to see what is uh, a black's intention here. So when they play f5, I'm absolutely sure that they want to stop queen h4 followed by knight g5. And now we're using the plan that Tiviakov used in his game against Arlandi. I'm about to show you that game. e5, knight a4, bishop e3, queen f2, rook a to e1, bishop d2, b3, uh, rook e2, rook f to e1, knight b2, and all he was actually trying to do in this game was to force his opponent to either play d5, in which case c5 would be that, to either take on e5, in which case they can immediately resign the game. And the game was queen g7, queen g3, queen f7, bishop c3, and after bishop g7, this guy resigned after bishop a5 because bishop was no longer under a pin. d6 was threatened, the rook on d8, and he uh, collapsed. Uh, and I was maybe showing you uh, these ideas, these positional ideas with e5, uh, knight a4, b3, bishop b2, or bishop d2, bishop c3, uh, because you, you need to understand them well. Uh, of course that you're going to take a look at these positions and take like more time, uh, but I'm just giving you here uh, some basic ideas. Knight that you guessed, you want to play bishop g4. You want to play b3. Bishop takes, rook takes, knight e7, bishop d2, and played f5. Just like you see, probably he had something in mind to go with this move, but after Ivancho captured, played queen e6, rook e1, queen e2, knight a4, he just swapped up these dark square bishops, and position looks pretty bad for black because they will remain with this weak pawns plus uh, king is going to be weak around the dark squares we want chili one to manage to win and finally those who play rook b8 in a way they just want to stop queen h4 f5 bishop h6 because somehow they just hope that black can go with the rook takes b2 we go with b3 um, you can go with queen h4. For example, a friend of mine, Croatian GM Jovanovic, played queen h4, bishop b7. By the way, if queen d7 to play queen g4, you always play h3. If bishop rook b7, nothing. Just a, you know, like, kind type of prophylactic defensive move, but it's nothing. You play f5, opening up bishop, bishop h6, threatening queen g5, or bishop g7, knight g5. Captures went with the knight g5 and uh, of course you cannot play rook g8 immediately because of checkmate so after queen e8 he came up with this e5 move i like it so much so after d takes e5 stop the video and actually i should have given you to stop the video on e5 but let's let's assume you found the e5 what's the next move knight c on e4 uh, because if the knight takes its mate if the pawn takes its rook f6 and mate so generally this position just looks completely lost for them but i wouldn't go with this queen h4 i actually find after like thorough analysis that this uh positional approach uh look even better for white so after b3 queen d7 to stop queen h4 with queen g4 you can go with bishop d2 knight e8 queen h4 in if queen g4 probably put you, you take on e7 of course knight e7 nothing still rook e to e1 bishop a6 you go with f5 you don't want to hesitate anymore and of course you just want to play with the most typical plan bishop h6 knight g5 with mating attack the guy played knight b5 now you can even see why did we move our rook from a1 to unpin this uh, knight and rook so after knight b5 knight g5 mark captain put his knight back to h3 and after king h7 came up with rook f3 rook e on f1 and played f takes followed by rook f7 white can stop queen h6 so he played h5 and after queen g5 resigned